Once again, the EPI team visit the Pythian Castle in search of more lingering spirits from World War II. And their first discovery is not exactly friendly. I ask that you make yourself known. But don't these spirits of the captured soldiers know their war is over? What's your name? What happened? Or do they still hold a grudge? It was simply inevitable. We were to return to the Pythian Castle. Few places we've been resonate as much of a thick energy of the past as this. This giant was built in 1913 by a fraternal organization known as the Knights of Pythias. In 1942, the US military acquired the building by what is known as Order of Immediate Possession. At this time, the U.S. was participating in a global war that involved a vast majority of the world's nations until Germany's unconditional surrender on May 8, 1945. While this war was being waged, prisoners sometimes were sent to various other countries overseas. One such location was the Pythian Castle. Here, they were contained in a prisoner of war facility which housed three plus wards with many being used for labor-related duties amongst the grounds. Over the years, several deaths, including a suicide, have occurred. With such a heavy connection to world history, it was quite clear these walls held the promise of using paranormal activity to more deeply and thoroughly tell its story. And so we felt it best to begin this new investigation of ours in the theater room, one of many large chambers where the residing soldiers of those days gathered within the castle. This is also where several amazing EVPs have been collected by paranormal teams and guests alike during past visits. Sweeps to determine areas of high EMF or electromagnetic frequencies is essential to be sure not to gather false readings. Locations with high EMF can also feed paranormal entities in theory. This just means a more thorough approach is necessary before concluding something gathered or experienced is truly of a paranormal nature. After we were satisfied with our findings, we began an attempt to connect with anyone from the other side who, while unseen, might be with us. Nathan. Did it? Totally. That was me. Well, here's a trick. Will you say my name? Can you say Mary? Can you say her name? Yeah. 
Oh, it did, didn't it? It did. And... Occasionally, you will run into spirits that are not that happy. It's when you run into the potty mouths. It just cussed me it out. It just cussed us out. <laughs> we are totally it's by ourselves. It cussed us out. Can you say her name? Can you say her name? Okay, I need to hear this again. Though I hear this word daily from the living, Hearing the F-bomb from the dead is not something I'm used to. It totally did. Oh my god. <laughs> Despite this being an offensive word, we had to share it. So you guys, you're wondering why I left out of there? No. Oh, you I didn't cussing. When you left. <laughs> we got cussed at. <laughs> <laughs> in the theater on the house. <laughs> Before we cut our audio evidence, everyone had literally vacated a theater room within seconds. But as a result of our sharing that evidence, it certainly doesn't take a rocket scientist to guess where they all went afterwards. Right back in the theater room. And what was captured next could be proof that we, in fact, were not alone. Just cussed them out. <laughs> okay. What is this? Two now. Yeah, I think. At this moment, Ron Pridemore is using what is best known in the paranormal field as an echo box. Its use is best explained like so. An echo box is a real-time amplified recording system used to create a bed of random chaotic noise using random phonetics, a microphone input, and a natural loop recording echo. This means what you are hearing is the actual audio being recorded in disk in real time as it happens. Essentially, like a ghost box, it's used to supposedly speak to the dead. I bet you can't say that again. <laughs> said what for because I need to know your name so I know who I'm talking to yeah we need to know who to cuss out 
Can you say somebody's name that sits in this room? Yeah. I'll do it. Will you say my name? Say anybody's name in here. Let's see how good you are. Somebody's toast. <laughs> Nathan. What? I didn't hear. Nathan. Yeah, something. What is the name of somebody in this room? No, my name is Saray. Try again. Come on. We need to know who we're talking to. You know who we are. Give us one of our names and we'll talk back to you. What's my name? Trouble. Trouble? Is that your nickname, Trouble? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say your name was Bethany? Sound like it. It's and Megan be high school. Right. She asked the spirit in German, my name is Megan, what's yours? So if it responds back in German. Yeah, I really want to try this downstairs. Yeah, because I don't know if there have been any German spirits up here unless some... Probably not. There spirit. may have been German descendants up here. I mean, we are, there are now, me and you, and probably a bunch of us are German descendants. Try a different spot. I'm gonna yeah. take some pictures. I'm not gonna just stand in one spot all night. <laughs> and so, after around 20 minutes, the guests broke up into several groups and began wandering the castle in search of spirits willing to interact. And what we were to encounter was exactly what we came for. After investigating for a few hours, we took a 15-minute break in the main room on the first floor. We were just about to collect our gear to start again, when we were approached by another guest claiming that he had just had an experience. At his request, he wanted to know if we would be willing to validate his claim. Um, you can take that and the bathroom. You, you want us to go take it? And you I mean, was, check I was in here washing my hands. There's no reason. He would tell me to start clapping back. Of course, we were more than willing to help, but uh, because of where it was located, only one of us could go in. Right in here? Yeah, I don't think anybody's in there. I was washing my hands on the right seat, and the left paper towel started flattening that. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. When he asked us to check out the bathroom, I didn't want any part of that one. <laughs> Immediately, my mind tries to explain what could have naturally caused this experience. Set that down. Can you make that go off? Right there? He says he was washing his hands in the sink to the right when the towel hanging from the left dispenser began waving. A strong airflow from the outside hallway would have been my first guess. Oh, wow, 3.9 hit right here. <laughs> Next to this, the old can. However, I still wanted to check to see if maybe there was any EMF present. It's gone. Is this not the wall? No. We had oh, 3.6, 9, 4, 4. I wonder if there's something in the wall. And of course, 
there was. Ten. I don't know. This, this might be something on the wall. That's a little high. Did it keep it? Is it in that? Yeah, we might have something in the wall. The high EMF detected does not always mean a spirit isn't there, but in fact, could in theory be a power source for them. With nothing much to go on here, I could only conclude this as a natural occurrence conveniently layered with a high man-made electrical magnetic field within the room. However, that does not mean that what happened to him was not real. I just wish we could have been more help for him. Anybody in my group wants to use any of the equipment again? And there's Danny's with us too, going into the basement. And she got She's all We were eager to return to the various chambers and stone rooms we visited earlier that year to see what we could draw out again, communicate with, or simply pay witness to of happenings involving other people. But at that moment, it was the interrogation room for some reason I felt drawn to the most. I wasn't sure why, but I was feeling an oncoming sense of aggression. Any spirits of any, enemy soldiers in here? But I knew better than to let it consume me. Anyone? Light this up. All you gotta do is touch it. Everybody's here, light it up. so I made a quick decision to immediately remove ourselves and get the hell out of the interrogation room. Next. As soon as we exited the tiny cell, my feelings began returning to normal. Across the hall, the Pride Moors continued conducting an echo box session. Once we were back into the main hall, we zigzagged from one room to the other. This gave me the chance to get a feel of the energies present to determine whether I felt it was worth remaining to try communicating with any spirits present. But the calm and safety we were enjoying as we strolled around was about to change as the hall took on a new feel. Got scratched. It said harm. She got scratched. You got scratched? Yeah, where I can scratch. Oh myself. boy. What? This is definitely not good. The EPI team is investigating below in the lower halls of the Pythian Castle, to which they're about to witness another guest with an unusual experience. And this time will not be as simple as before. But instead, something a bit more disturbing. Something that'll take us both by complete surprise. 
What happened next, I did not expect. Do you want to see something interesting? I got scratched. She got scratched. And it said harm. What happened? Scratched. You got scratched? Yeah, where I can scratch Oh, boy. What? Yeah, she did. Macro. Yep. Big time. That was me. When Denise came up to us and showed us what had happened, I was in total surprise. Because these things, they just don't happen at the Pythian Castle. A series of scratches between the shoulder blades of Denise Pridemore. Calling card of a demonic being. Considering their line of work, we feel this is not something that resides here, but instead an attachment from elsewhere, making itself known as a warning without explanation. Possibly the Sally House, where they occasionally investigate. Yeah, you got three scratches. I was in that cell down there, and as I was walking from there to up here to talk to my husband, I got scratched. Something's down here. Yeah, I was in here and then I left. And it, it felt, I felt it as I was walking. I didn't go into the crack you go. Yeah, I felt somebody shoot their hand in my back. Just now? No. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I saw you. Yeah, we asked it. Do you want us to get out? And it said, leave. I said, said, I'm not leaving. And it said, get out. And I, by the time I got to the door, it said, ow. I mean, really loud. That's when she and got to that's push. When I, oh, that's when I turned around. Oh, oh you got pushed? Mm-hmm. What was, when I turned this thing on, what was the first thing it said? In that room? Prison. Prison. I've never heard of it. It said it three times. Yeah. I got scratched while we were out there. I saw you, so I saw the scratches. And actually, when I stood right by you, when you were having the scratches examined, this one was a 1.2. What did that just say? What does it say? It nothing ever says to me. That's what it sounded like. Usually it says Lulu or Lula or something closer to my first name, not my middle name. Well, because Denise is too hard. Yeah. Can you say anyone's name that's in here? <laughs> What's your name? Pete. Did you scratch me, Pete? Please don't read me. Knowing the Pridemore group was intending to visit the tunnel, we decided to be respectful and give them their privacy and move about the castle until they were finished so as not to interfere with any of their efforts. Later on as we approached the tunnel, we peered inside from the entrance. Now it was time that I decide how to proceed and with what camera equipment so we could begin our own investigation. But I had to ask myself if I really wanted to do this. The answer was undoubtedly yes. As children, there are many things that feed our fears. Siblings with stories of monsters under our beds, television as well as movies, are also focused to program us to be afraid of the dark. Generally, all roads led to making you fear ghosts or a childhood monster called the Boogeyman. That's without 
Do I still have fears? Yes. Do I think monsters exist? That I can't answer. What I do know is we have to remove what's paralyzing our minds and unlearn all that we have learned to be more open-minded to things around us or we'll never move forward discovering the knowledge and answers of the unknown. After close consideration of how to proceed, we retreated to gather more equipment. I was not walking away from this one. It's been here over a hundred years now, and it'll be here a hundred more. It's stood the test of time, standing proud and quiet. But even these stone walls have memories of their own. Memories of a war we hope will never be repeated again. And of prisoners of war. Prisoners who may still be here, who haven't gone on because they choose not to. Or could it really be that they have nowhere to go? We started our excursion into the tunnel by setting up a few cameras and sensory devices to ensure the detection of anything around. But we also had to guard the entrance to prevent other approaching guests from contaminating our evidence. It was my job to guard the entrance to the tunnel to prevent people from flashing their lights or making a lot of noise. Do. Go as far as I can go, so. Some of the claims from people who visited the tunnel below the Pythian castle are that of footsteps that have been heard coming from the center that scuffle towards you and then stop. I'm hoping that we can capture that experience here tonight. After we were confident no one else would approach, I ventured in. It was with great honor that I also had the pleasure of being accompanied by Terry Gamble, an investigator with the Paranormal Task Force with many invaluable years in the field. His presence in the tunnel with me helps to validate anything we might encounter together. Once we were in position, we began to speak out loud to anyone with an earshot on the other side. That, I think, didn't they say it was at the middle of the tunnel? Yes. Looks like there's somebody standing down there. To the left. Is there anybody here? Do you almost hear a voice? If there's anyone coming down here, there are a device.
devices on the pipes. Trigger them. Let us know you're there. If there's anyone here, I ask that you make yourself known. Walk closer. Do I feel there was something in this tunnel with us? I most certainly do. But now it's time to move on. There are many theories floating about in the world of paranormal investigating concerning exactly what we're searching for. 
None of them that I can say I'm entirely loyal to, but I can say that I am open-minded about. One such theory I entertain is way bigger than just the simple everyday explanation of ghosts. It suggests all of time exists in a never-ending continuous loop inside of one big ball, where timelines, if disturbed, can glide against one another, maybe cross into or possibly even make exchanges or deposits. That these intersecting points in the timelines are giving us glimpses into the past, the not-so-distant future, or maybe even an alternate timeline altogether. But if this is true, can those on the other side see us as well? It has been said in some documented accounts that apparitions have appeared to be as surprised of us as we are of them. Could this be why? Are we the ghosts to them? This return to the Pythian castle was rich in new experiences, surpassing those of our original visit. At first, we encountered colorful language, <laughs> which later turned to physical aggression. What's your name? Pete. Did you scratch me, Pete? But with each investigation, we feel a deeper respect for what lives in the shadows. What's my name? We leave knowing that who or whatever is here delivered the goods for everyone involved. And if our experience below ground was indeed genuine, then just who did we make contact with? And are they at peace? Or forever stuck reliving their own personal war? <laughs>